Everybody out there in YouTube, thank you for tuning into my videos. This one is going to be about RNA viruses. Now these videos are aimed at anybody who's taking a national board exam uh, for dental or for medical. The content of these videos is very pertinent for these styles of questions and I made sure I put all of the most important information on here. So this stuff is, these lectures are jam packed with lots of good stuff that will help you out for these tests. So this lecture will be will be this lecture series will be focusing on RNA envelope viruses and specifically we'll be looking at orthomyxovirus. So here we've got a, a slide that lays out all the important RNA envelope viruses. So I've got a bullet format here. I've got orthomyxovirus, paramyxovirus, arbovirus, rhabdovirus, and retrovirus. And you'll see here that I wrote this in, I highlighted this in red, and um, the wording that's highlighted in red is going to be a uh, mnemonic or memory aid. And so I don't know about you guys, but when I was taking microbiology or studying for microbiology for my exams, um, the, there's just so much content and it can be kind of overwhelming trying to, because you just have to memorize all of it. And so these are memory aids aimed at kind of helping to make things a little easier for you when you're studying. And I made a note here on multiple choice questions in the answer choices, eliminate bacteria from viruses and vice versa. So for example, you might get a question that says, which of the following microorganisms contain segmented RNA? And your answer choices might be influenza A, Bacillus anthracis, Corine bacteria, and Campylobacter rectus. And uh, if you ask yourself which of these is not like the other, then you see influenza A is not like the other because it's a virus and the rest are bacteria. So that's a little tip on um, a way to approach some of these questions. Now, uh, you, you may get simple questions that just ask you to differentiate which viruses are RNA and which are DNA. And I have uh, another video on my on the DNA viruses with a quick and easy way to distinguish between RNA and DNA viruses. So check that out. And um, on paramyxovirus, virus, you'll see here that I wrote para of M's. Now, if you look at the word paramyxovirus, virus, para right here of M's. So I'm kind of going for a, a pair of M's. That kind of sounds like a pair of M's. And that stands for mumps and measles. So those will fall into the category of paramyxovirus, pair of M's for mumps and measles. So now we're going to go to the next slide and we're going to look at RNA naked viruses. Uh, this lecture series won't be on naked viruses, but I did just want to kind of throw this out there for you guys, just for organizational sake. So we've got, uh, think CPR here. Okay, so you see we've got CPR, so we've got calicivirus. We got picornavirus and rheovirus, and uh, you'll see here that I highlighted RNA here because um, that's just a good way to remember that this is an RNA virus. So it's right there in the name of the virus, RNA. So anytime that you write out this virus, always capitalize the RNA in there, and it'll just tell you exactly where it belongs. So why are we going to think CPR? Okay, so CPR is going to tell you the viruses that are in the naked group and we're going to think you will need CPR when you see these naked viruses and the R is big to remind you that it's RNA and not DNA. Okay so we're going to start on orthomyxovirus. So orthomyxovirus is single-stranded RNA and it's segmented and this is something that likes that you'll see frequently in the study materials and on practice exams. I love to test on this idea that orthomyxovirus is segmented or influenza is segmented. So I wrote down here BOAR, B-O-A-R. This is an acronym to help you remember which viruses have segmented genomes. So we're going to have Bunyaviridae, Orthomyxoviridae or Orthomyxovirus, Arenaviridae, and Rioviridae. Not retroviridae, but rioviridae. Okay, so that's BOR for segmented genomes. Now, within orthomyxovirus, we have influenza A, B, and C, which are separate entities. But um, these are all classified 
based on nucleocapsid antigens. So influenza A, B, and C, they all have kind of different nucleocapsid antigens. And uh, they're passed on via respiratory droplets. And then Staph aureus, the bacteria, is associated with fatalities in post-influenzal infections. Okay, we're going to focus most of our attention on influenza A because it's the most common influenza and it's the one that's tested on the most. Okay, so the ability of influenza A to cause epidemics depends on antigenic changes in a specific part of the virus, and that part is called hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. These are two separate uh, surface proteins on the virus, and the chain, there's two types of changes. These are two, two words you have to become pretty familiar with. Uh, because you'll see these come up a lot. So antigenic shift and antigenic drift. And you'll see here I underlined this in bold and I underlined this in bold. So antigenic shifts are major changes based on reassortment of genome pieces. And this leads to new surface molecules such as a change in the envelope. And so antigenic drift is a minor change based on random mutation. And if you think about the word drift, it, does, it just seems kind of slow, small, minor. And so in order to remember that, we're going to think of a drift as kind of a slow thing, a minor thing. Whereas a shift, something like an earthquake, that's, that's major. That's a major change. A shift is a major change. Okay, so now we're going to move on to how to treat influenza A. Uh, so we've got amantadine or remantadine. That's the medication that we'll use to treat influenza A. So this is going to inhibit replication of influenza A virus by interfering with viral attachment and uncoating and it's effective in prophylaxis and treatment of influenza A. So in order to remember that this what this drug treats and we've got this memory aid right here we're going to think of the word and we're basically just going to break the word into pieces a man to dine, like a man to dinner, taking a man to dinner. So you wouldn't want to take a man to dine if he had influenza. You know, if this guy's got the flu and he's got snot dripping all over the place, you just wouldn't want that. So a man to dine, you wouldn't want to take a man to dine if he had influenza. Oftentimes you'll get questions um, in two ways on on medications for these microorganisms so oftentimes you might get like the question that just straight up tells you amantadine um, that would ask you amantadine treats blank and you'd have to come up with which illness or virus it treats or you may get asked which drug is used to treat influenza and you'd have a, a choice a host of choices to choose from so amantadine treats influenza okay next is Reyes syndrome so we're still on orthomyxovirus influenza Reyes syndrome this is a uh, something that comes up pretty frequently on the exams and on the study materials so children who have influenza that take aspirin are at risk of developing Reyes syndrome so you have to know the requirements that have to be met to be at risk for developing Reyes syndrome and that's to, you have to be a child, you have to have influenza, and you have to be taking aspirin and it can lead to death. Okay, here's our review of influenza, all the important things we need to know. It's single-stranded, RNA segmented. And remember that we've got that Bohr mnemonic to help us know all of the segmented genome viruses. Antigenic shift is a major change. Antigenic drift is a minor change. Amantadine, that's the way that we're going to remember amantadine is, and remantadine are going to be treating influenza. And then Reyes syndrome with the aspirin. And then uh, Staph aureus with the post-influenza death. So I believe that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure that you uh, leave a like on the video if you feel like it helped you out. Uh, subscribe to my channel. It's free. And uh, leave any comments or questions down below, and good luck in your studies.